Hello and welcome to episode 5 of our pre-season series here on New East Courts in 2018. Uh, tonight, as you can see by the jacket and the background, we're at South Cardiff, Yulinga Oval. Uh, we're going to catch up with Dennis Fajkovic, uh, his dad, uh, Chris Moyling, uh, Steve Blunt, the uh, entire coaching staff, the senior coaching staff, and a few of the players as well. Enjoy. I'm here with Steve Blunt, uh, the coach of South Cardiff Under-19s. Uh, first of all, how are you finding your new coaching job here? Really good. Um, everyone at the pubs made me very welcome. They're a good bunch of guys. It's a place that I am, and then Toronto as well, which is good. Um, and so far, yeah, everything's running really smoothly. It felt right at home. Yeah. Um, what are you finding the differences so far here compared to Toronto? Um, I guess from from the sort of the facilities are, are probably you know on a par. Toronto's got a, a great setup out there, obviously with Royal Peacock, yeah, um, and a great club. Um, from a point of view of, um, you know, I was more involved in the senior side there, so the 23s were training with first grade. Whereas here, obviously, having the 19s, although I'm still um, you know engaged up there to some degree, you know, we train in a slightly separate area, so I've, I've probably got a little bit more. Um, control or, yeah, or freedom, yeah, freedom to a degree. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a lot of frustration last year, and at points, you sort of said to me, you were sort of questioning your desire whether to continue or not as a coach. Um, you go on a bit of a soul-searching mission after <laughs> last season. Um, those sort of days happen, you know, on the on the game day, or, yeah. or after a a wet and windy freezing cold night of training when hardly anyone turns up but in the main it sort of lasts about I don't know probably 12 hours by the time the, yeah. the, the next morning rolls around you're ready to go and again despite the frustrations uh, the last couple of years out there it was you know I, I thoroughly enjoyed the time out there and and a good bunch of blokes and good people in the club and um, certainly no okay. regrets but uh, yeah, there are days when you when you wonder why you're doing it, and yeah. uh, they're, they're a bit hard to take, but yeah, resilience has to work. Yeah. Um, what brought you here to South Cardiff over probably other options? Um, Just closer to there, home. Yeah, that was one of the, a key thing. Um, yeah. I live at Cameron Park, and uh, I've got you know, my young blokes playing soccer now. Um, you know, you sort of the closeness to home. I, I started coaching out at Morissette, and I went to Toronto because it was half the distance and now this is half the distance again so a big factor yep. but also it's a club that had been in the NPL only you know, three seasons ago so yeah I've always looked at it as a club that you know, had the potential to get back there it seems to be a well-structured club yeah and um, you know it's it's yeah it's probably got the ambition that kind of matches my own. yeah um, you obviously mentioned dropping down from the 23s to the 19s. I guess you're looking forward to having some, some young, keen players to coach this year. I guess it's a little bit different than coaching uh, players who may be in their 20s. Yeah, at first it was sort of, I, I, you know, my preference was initially to stay with the senior grades, first grade 23s. But, you know, the good thing about being in 23s, you're involved with the first grade squad of training and everything, and rather yeah. heavily involved me as did Tony the year before. Um, but what I found since coming here with the 19s is yeah. that um, yeah, the, the attitude of the guys is fantastic and yeah. it, it's an opportunity, you know, I'm an educator sort of by profession, so it's an actual opportunity to develop players and prepare them for that, knowing what the expectation is. Yeah. And so far, just um, the numbers of training have been good and yeah, the, you, know, you, you look at the players, sort of not hanging on every word, but you know, they're, they're absorbing information, that's really good, that's yeah. really good to coach. Um, how have you found it so far working with, um, obviously, the Fajkovic's and Chris Moyle and the the coaching staff here, have they supported you really well? Yeah, and I knew a couple of, I knew, I knew Chris and uh, Stuart Prince, uh, the new club president, and the yep. um, and one of the coaches from the licensing courses. Um, Fadge, when I met him, very friendly, very, got on quite well, seemed to have a similar philosophy and attitude, and, uh, and he's very enthusiastic about what he wants to achieve here. And, and yeah, just look, everyone at the club, has just been super friendly and approachable. And yeah. uh, it's been really good. Um, I guess you've got to accept the fact that one or two of your players might get plucked up from here, here or there. Like I guess you're supporting the fact that they may go up to 23s or first grade some weeks. One of the first, well, the first thing I said to Fadge uh, was that you know, my role is a development role. The second thing I said to, you know, when I met the players was to say, look, 
my job isn't judged by results, it's judged by how many players get exposure to first grade and 23s this year. And we've yeah. already had a couple of guys dragged up for training and uh, and uh, Zach Wolf played in the 23s game last week, yep. uh, the other week against Valentine. So it, it's hard because you don't know sort of you know, week to week sometimes, but that, yeah. that's our role. And, and that would be, love it if, if half a dozen players or more get that experience opportunity yeah. this year. Um, How do you find the hit out against Vallo a couple of weeks ago? For the, for the 19s, uh, I think all three grades did quite well. For the 19s, we started quite well. Yeah. Um, I was very happy on the day. Um, we obviously tired and when we rotated some players to make sure everyone got game time, we lost our way a little bit and Valentine were able to take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're a yard faster and, and you know, two yards more technically gifted than us, but NPL uh, versus us, uh, first hit out, I was you know, overall pretty happy. I thought, to be honest, we were worthy of at least you know, a, a two-all result perhaps. Yeah. Um, you know, I think 3-1 probably flattered them a little bit. Yeah. Keeping in mind that obviously they also weren't necessarily at their uh, anywhere near season performance levels as well. Yeah. Um, is there a bit of pressure on this side? Obviously, a few of the players from last year have gone up, so you've got uh, a fair few 17s players coming in Kyle Furness and Gold, Nick Hervas, Lachlan Morgan, Jack Harris, and Josh Allen. Just a few of those to mention. Um, obviously, it's a stepping stone for them. It is, and for some of them, it's a really important year. You know, 19s is one of those grades where all of a sudden you're in the senior ranks, there's no unlimited interchange. You know, if, if you're young enough, you might get a couple of years in 19s. If you're not, this is it. You're either you're either making the senior squad somewhere or, or you're you know, going to play all age or whatever the case may be. So I'm, yeah. I'm expecting a pretty big year for, from some of those names you mentioned. Yeah. Um, you're planning to probably shock a few of the top sides. Uh, obviously, this side on paper probably wouldn't rate as high as some of the other sides have sort of boosted their squads a little bit. Um, we're looking to pull off some shocks this year. I always set, wherever I am, I always set sort of my goals and I don't focus on results and particularly, I mean, particularly you know, the last couple of years, you, you, know, you, you lose games or you draw games and you should have won and vice versa. There's nothing predictable. Every team is saying you yeah. want to make the top four or we've strengthened or whatever. Our goal is to see a week on week improvement by the time we get to week 20. Um, yes, we want to make the semi-finals if we can. That's certainly the club's aim across all grades. Yeah. Um, if the, the most important thing I want to see is where the players are today as to where they are towards the end of the year. And if we've developed players up in a first grade or 23s and we brought maybe some of the 17s or younger guys into the squad and you know we've stayed together and grown as a side, then that, that's the tip in the box yeah. this year. Um, final question, you come off as a really nice sort of guy on and off the park, um, but you will be pushing these players to perform at their best level or near enough? Um, in the sense of, I'm a very competitive person, and, and you know, I've, I'm as capable as uh, as any coach of, of having a spit, and uh, you know, I can I can be the autocratic coach. But I've learned through both my professional career and management, my, my teaching, and also through uh, through soccer coaching, that it's trying to find what works with any particular group and what motivates a group. Yeah. Um, and at 19, certainly because it's a sort of a, a learning and development grade, then the emphasis is on, you know, I, f I find that with some of the younger players, if all you're doing is yelling and screaming and demanding, you know, pushing them beyond um, their limits, then, you know, they drop off, they fade away. So yeah. it's, it's, about, it's a matter of managing their maturity levels, their capabilities. Um, but so far we've, we've done a fair bit of running and ball work and, uh, you know, we, we started after Christmas. We did do some tr some sessions, more get to know one another before Christmas. Yep. Um, but we're working a lot on the style of play, the shape, and getting the runs in the legs through the, the, the technical aspects of the game rather than, you know, just running up sand hills and, and flogging them to death. Yeah. Um, football's a game that's played in the head and heart, and I'm trying to instill at least the, the head part that the passion comes from within and you've either got it or you haven't. Yeah. Anybody that knows me well enough through through playing or coaching knows that I'm a bit of a bad loser. So the last couple of years have been interesting, but I you know, resilience, that's the word. Yeah. Alright. Very best of luck with this. Right, thanks Ty, thanks for everything you do for us and uh, the game as well. Thanks. No problem. I'm here with Jake Amodio from the South Cardiff under 19s team. First of all, mate, how's life at your new club? Yes, yeah, good. Everyone seems to be having fun and 
They just don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, you obviously made the move here after, I guess, a frustrating year at times last year at Cahaiba. Um, yeah. Things didn't work out for that team. You know, there were some issues here and there, but you yourself did score a couple of goals. You're looking, I guess, to go to that next level here at Southie with a new squad. Yeah. Yeah, looking to get a few more goals this season and uh, hopefully set up a few as well. Yeah. Um, what are the differences so far working with Steve Blunt compared to previous coaches? Um, well, Steve seems to be um, focusing a lot on set plays and um, working as a team together. Yeah. And he's got um, he's got a lot of good ideas and he seems to have a good plan for the season. Yeah. He's also doing the warm-up himself. That's actually kind of yeah, funny. Yeah, he's getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, being part of a club that promotes its youth, obviously you might see a few of your teammates or even if you push to that next level, you might get a chance to play off the bench in 23s or something. Yeah, like yeah those hoping lines. to uh, yeah, get a few games up in 23s and uh, yeah, get the opportunity up there. Yeah. Is it going to be a bit of a challenge this year having a lot of players that have come up from the 17s who haven't really necessarily experienced this level of playing in the 19s? Um, no, I think a lot of them are up to the challenge. They seem to... Um, yeah, they seem like they can handle it, and uh, I think a few of them came off the bench a bit for the 19s during the season, so yeah, yeah they, they know what it's like. Um, first hit out against Rallo a couple of weeks ago probably wasn't, I guess it was a good hit out, but obviously there's stuff to build on from there, and you probably learned yeah. a bit that day. Yeah, um, I thought we did actually pretty well in that game, considering that was our first game together. And yeah. uh, there's a few good signs there, a few good plays that we did, and um, yeah, the team's looking good. Um, you're going to be out to gun down your old team this year. Obviously, uh, John Ridgian knows all about scoring against Jared Gorsuch. Um, I was here last year when he did so. Uh, you'd be looking to maybe get a goal against the old club and just give him a, a, a slight wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hoping to get a goal up against them and um, yeah, see, see if I can get one or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, this side, probably on paper, isn't you know expected to make the finals or anything along those lines, but you're looking to prove doubt is wrong and really. I guess shock a few of the bigger clubs. Yeah, I reckon we can um, we can shock a few of them. I reckon we've we've got the ability to do it, and if we work hard enough, I reckon we can get there. Yeah. All right. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Dennis Fatchkovic from uh, South Cardiff. Uh, I don't know your exact role. Is it head coach, player coach, assistant? Yeah. It's the million dollar question, I suppose. But um, it is. I'm, I'm the head coach at South Cardiff. Um, as you know, and as a lot of people know, it's difficult to coach and play. Yeah. And that's sort of why I've sort of eliminated myself from the actual coaching. Yeah. I oversee things, but um, the coaching is left to Dada, my dad, and uh, Chris Moylan, who we got over from Adamstown. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what was it that brought you to South Cardiff after being in the NPL for a few years? Well, so I left the NPL for family, like I had a daughter, wanted a bit of a break, played, when you play for 13 odd years in the NPL and yeah. you just get over it, you know what I mean, and, I, and daughter came so it was a time for me to go, but what brought me back to Cardiff, well, pretty much having a look at the NPL uh, to ladder and seeing them finish like third last yeah. that year and, and just, just knowing that I had a good time here and that this club doesn't deserve to... Um, be down in the second division, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, where this club was at, obviously on the field wasn't good and off the field. You've changed a bit since you arrived. Uh, what was it that you aimed to do when you, when you got in? Well, the aim was, like, when I had a meeting, I um, spoke about NPL, the return to the NPL, and if the club was serious in getting back. Yeah. And um, a lot needed to change and culture-wise and, and, and um, the setup really you know and um so that was the main thing that we sort of have focused and the plan that we've set with it's a it's a long-term plan like obviously 12 months ago where we were was it was just we were in shambles player wise um set up wise but yeah. um it's a process that's going to take a few years and you know we, we're, we're getting people in the right positions and the right people in the club involved you know what i mean like a, yeah. Everyone that's joining the club, they're joining for the right reason. As as most people know, we we're not money loaded. We're yeah. we're just a, another club in the Northern League One, and yeah. you know we we do our things like most of these players. You know we we do this year have a few bigger names, yeah. but they've all come to play for the right reason at this club, and 
Yeah, that, that's that's sort of the we're trying to have a good culture, and then you know I think last year you mentioned we were a tight knit group, and that is the fact. Like we we want to be that tight knit group, and yeah. we want to be mates, and that's in the end we we all play football for for you know for the love of it. Yeah. Um, obviously, first grade last year, I guess maybe surprised you a little bit of how how well you did go, especially defensively, and I guess you showed a lot of heart and desire to push that far into the season and almost make the finals. Yeah, well, I think I think we surprised um, other people, but yeah. um, just surprised me a lot. It didn't really didn't surprise me when we came here. I didn't know anyone, and it was a clean slate. As I said, last the one I took over was um, end of December, so like the yep. team was just pretty much whoever turned up. That was the team. Yeah. Um, when 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 I got to know the boys and the local Cardiff boys that have been here since you know they started playing football, and that's 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 been part of the reason why we've gone back to bring old Cardiff boys back. Yeah. The right ones, obviously, the the ones that that. That are in it for the right reasons, and um, yeah, yeah. So, that's pretty much it. Um, seeing where the twenty threes were last year, and obviously you aim to make it more of a development squad. Like you spoke to me out at Belmont that day about it being more of an under twenties sort of guys that can play first grade and guys you want to see play first grade within the next few years. Yeah, we've 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 tried to bring in the youth, like players that we can actually concentrate and and put in time. For a reason, because we can see that they could be first graders, yep. and um, that's that's what we've aimed to do. Uh, obviously, you, you you always look to have strong sides, and and I I feel like our senior squad, we, we call it a senior squad in here, and it's it's actually really competitive this year, and, and I think it'll show like for places. Yeah, I'm um, having someone like Chris Moylan jump on board last season, and the work he did with the 19, he sort of came in. Uh, halfway during the year and actually you know, turned that side around and helped him you know, gain some results. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chris is um, definitely a great addition to the club and that's a thing that we always... like. We, we're not only looking to improve on the field players-wise, we're yep. looking to improve in coaches, um, volunteers, committee members, uh, look, the whole lot. Like, it's There's a lot of hard work that goes into actually... Yeah get to this aim and where we want to be in the MPL. You know, are we ready right now? Probably not, you know, we're not. That's yeah. honest, but um, are we going to get there? I think so. I think we've got a quite a big backing and I, I think we're, we've always been a club that's had plenty of support. So, you know, like, that's what we're looking for. We're, we're looking to bring back the people that used to, you know, we, we used to have, I don't know, like 400 people come here watch us and, yeah. and we used to have one of the better crowds in the NPL. So we're trying to bring those days back and, and yeah, so always looking to improve. Chris Moylan, definitely a good addition. Um, he's obviously been promoted to the senior squad as well. Um, you know, he's experienced and he's, he's a perfectionist, so that's what we want around this yeah. club. Um, last year obviously had a very strong defence, but attack sort of did let you down from time to time. Um, you know, certainly boosted the options this year after uh, Matt Reynolds jumping on board now. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, yeah, definitely Matt <laughs> had a pretty good year last year, didn't he? He scored 22 goals, I think he was, in, in all of the finals and the game. So, like, that's definitely a great addition. I think he's one of the better players in the comp, if not the best. Yeah. Um, obviously, Dino coming back, he, it was um, when I spoke to him when he left Magic, obviously, he left personal reasons and um, I didn't want him coming back here if he wasn't um, in it for the right reason but he, he's 100% committed to the club and he, he wants to see us do well and he wants to do well himself so that's a scary thought you know for yeah. the other clubs in my, in my opinion because he, he will um, shake it up a little bit. No I think he can definitely be the best player in the competition if he really wants to be. Yeah. Um, you brought in some added depth across the park, obviously the goalkeeping spot, you've got a fair bit of competition there and I guess all positions is, you know, there's now options. Yeah, well that's that's sort of where I've eliminated myself from actually being the guy that I've, I've assembled the squad and I've sort of handed it to Chris and Dad and um, I think they have got a few headaches ahead of them because yeah. like even the games that we play 
between each other and whatnot. And it's it's not always the first team that wins, you know. So that's that last year didn't happen as much, you know. So yeah. it's really competitive, and we've got some good young boys coming through. So it's it's exciting times. Yeah, I'll ask you a little bit about the work you've done off the park with the committee, yeah. um, trying to build a better relationship with the junior club and bring them in involved, yeah. and I guess just building up this club to be a force in the NPL eventually. Yeah. Well, if you know Cardiff, the between the junior club and the senior club, like a lot of clubs, there's, there has been you know difficulties for, for for silly reasons really. As 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 now we are. We we we're, we're, we're a joint club. We've it's been voted for, so that's it's a good thing. Um, we want to work together. Like we're obviously both South Cardiff Gunners, and um, the we just want to work together. So like obviously we're putting in. Like last year I did um, coaching clinics for the young juniors of the junior club, and um, you know we'll do we'll continue doing that work, and they help us out. You know game days, ball boys, and whatnot. We just as I said, we, what we're trying to build is a family club, a club that's when people come, they have a good time watching us, and, and, and when they play us on the field, they have a real tough time playing us. So yep. that's what we're trying to build. Um, letting obviously the youth grades know that this club's all about promoting youth. Obviously, if they perform in 19s, yeah. perform in reserve grade, they can get a spot potentially on the bench first grade and yeah. prove themselves at this level. Yeah, well, that, that this year is a. Uh, it's a big thing, like our Kyle, our 19s keeper, he's been training with us for the last couple of sessions, I think. I think he's pushing, but we've got keepers. Um, obviously, well, Don Fox has just left. Um, he, he couldn't handle the competition, so he decided to leave. And um, But there's, as I said, Kyle's ready, he's, he's pouncing, he's a young kid ready to go. And as I said, well, I'm not scared of putting young kids in. And as long as you're good enough, you will yeah. get a shot here. Yeah, I, I spoke with Steve Blunt earlier about that, the 19s really pushing up, and Kyle is one, one of a lot of 17s from last year that I guess are looking to really become better this year yeah. and potentially get a chance to play first team football, which is great to hear. Yeah, well, it is, and, and, and we do we do work with them a fair bit, like, and especially like the, the likes of Macca and and and, and, and Claudon and um, yeah. Dino, they're, they're players that have been around and, and had some experience. So, like for these young boys coming through, you know, it's something to look up to. And I think I, that's one thing we're 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 doing all right. At. Yeah, you've obviously aimed up to some of the NPL clubs, booked in pre-season trials. Yeah, had a good hit out against Valo recently. So, is it good to test yourselves against them? Yeah, yeah, Valo is fine. Uh, it was a fun fun game. Uh, Sills is really good with that. We've sort of made that an annual thing. Um, um, yeah, definitely always good to test ourselves and, you know, see where we are and that's that's been sort of the main thing. Like, last year, the, the trials were just put together really quickly, like, thanks to Rufo and a few boys that helped me out because it, it was a short time. This year, we've actually had a chance to plan a pre-season and, you know, ask some of the other mates for, for some trials and whatnot and, you know, we've got some competitive trials coming up, Maitland next weekend, not this weekend, the weekend after, and then, you know, Charlestown as well. So yeah. I think these that's sort of going to test us in a, where, where the MPL standards are and see how our formation and the way we want to play goes against teams that are, you know, have got quality across the park. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I didn't really want to play in any, any clubs in our comp because I think last, last year it worked out. We played Bellsports four times in the year, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's a lot of time, so I've tried yeah. to stay away from our clubs. Um, what are you expecting from around the division this year? Obviously, some teams to watch out for, um, your typical front runners, and perhaps some dark horses. Yeah, I think everyone's um, improved their squads, you know, all, all across every team. But um, obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're really just concentrating on ourselves and, you know, doing better than we did last year. And we, we had a good run last year. Then we had some bad runs, you know. Like so, we, we, consistency is a key, and and having these players now that, that we've improved the squad, we want to sort of, you know, not just improve it on paper. We want to go out there and, and, and show the rest of the comp that we 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 can be classed as the same as Cooks Hill and and, and Bell Swans and Cahaba, because we're we're a club that's big enough. That's for sure. Yeah.
Um, where do you want this club to be within the next two or three years? Is it in PL1? That is definitely the aim, and you know, th three years of it's, it's probably something that you know is realistic. And in three years, with with the way we are going, I, I think we, if we're not there, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah. And last question: What is your aim for this year? Is it top four, top two, or potentially even pushing for the premiership? Well, if, if, if you know me, it's just about winning, man. So I, I tried to win it last year, so yeah, um, we'll be definitely be pushing for. Top spot, whether we get these, we'll see. We'll talk at the end of the year. Yeah, best of luck, mate. Thanks for chatting. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. I, I'm here with Claude and Akmatai. I'm sure I said it right. You said it right, mate. Claude and Akmatai from the South Cardiff Gunners. Um, how's things going in 2018 so far, mate? Yeah, they're going pretty good, mate. We're working hard. As you already know, we already played our first friendly match, yep. which was a good game, I think. And uh, we keep going. We just want this season to be better than the last one. Yeah. I'm happy to find your way to South Cardiff. Obviously, you were at Singleton a couple of years ago. It's where yeah, I first saw that you. Way. But um, you found your way here. Yeah, that is, a, I'll tell you the story. So I was looking, obviously, I was living in Hunter Valley before because my partner just from there. So that's why I was playing for Singleton. And then I was looking for teams in Newcastle when I tried to move here. And uh, I see the last name, you know, Dennis Faker, which is the head coach. And it's a background from where we come from, you know? Yeah. It's closed countries. And I said, I just give him a call. And I gave him a call and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to ask what country you're from because I'll probably get it wrong. But obviously a European background. But tell yeah. us a little bit about your background. So I was born, I'm Albanian. 100%. I was going to say Albanian, okay, yeah. that's up for Russia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm Albanian, I was born in Albania. And then uh, I grew up in Greece. We immigrated to Greece when I was 10 years old. Yeah. And then all my life I played in Greece, I played in Italy, obviously I played in Albania professionally, not many games but I had a run. And then back to Australia here. Yeah. yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the back end of last season and how this side really pushed and showed a lot of heart and desire to to you know hold out Kahiba with that scoreless draw and keep some clean sheets and really test some of the big sides. Yeah, last season it's a disappointment for me because we, we wanted to make semis, yeah. but it's our fault because including me, five like players from the first 11 starting, we left for holiday in the last game which we were playing Belson, Cooks Hill and Thornton, you know, I wasn't yeah. Thornton but they were for others. Uh, and this is I think where we dropped the point because we are up there, I believe we have, if we had a full team until the last games we'll make semis I believe. Yeah. Um, obviously, you needed to probably boost your attacking stock up last year. You didn't that was probably the one thing the club didn't do was score a lot of goals. But I yeah. guess you'll be doing that now with Maka coming in and, and Dino. Yeah, I'm very happy, mate. Uh, we're gonna have a good, good, good game this year. Yeah. Because as you've seen, the first game, me and Dino and Maka, we can just play. It's our first game, and we played so well. Yeah. So we have that bond already. Uh, did it surprise you how well the team did play that day against Valentine? No really, because I think we have good players and uh, we, we can play. We're also missing a couple, it's fewer in Europe still and they come. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a good team and we deserve to play like that. Are you expecting to be at probably near your best level for round one? Yeah, of course. We're going we're gonna to give our best in every game. Yeah. Um, not having probably the underdog tag this year, people didn't really expect us to be too strong last year, but yeah. um, I've spoken to some opposition coaches who, who rate Southie as a team to beat. Yeah, well last year no one knew what's happening to Southie, because even when you try to contact it, we're keeping everything closed, and, yeah. you know what I mean, like no one knew anything was happening. And then uh, as every game we played, everyone learned about us and learned that. But I think this year is different, everyone knows who we are. And what we want to achieve, so yeah. But except us, every other team has uh, become better as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've obviously got a personal hunger to win every game you play and yeah. score a few goals as well. I'm um, very competitive player. Yeah, I've I've got this like even if you see, I probably it's probably the Albanians. I don't know. You see, Berlin, Berisha, like we have this like every game I play, even if I play against my brother, I want to win it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's not always going to win it, but. I give it a shot, you know? Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit of this story. When I first met you up at Singleton, 
I couldn't say your name properly. So what you did, you went and scored three goals, and by the end of that day, I could say your name properly, and you gave me the thumbs up. Yeah, that was a funny story. So first goal I scored, you said it wrong, and then I came to tell you the second one, and then you said you say it wrong again, and then on the third goal that I scored, you got it right. <laughs> so that was funny. Yeah. But you said pretty quick because other people I don't even say it now, right? So yeah. Corn and Akmatai, for those who want to know. It's, it's one of the more original names in the competition. <laughs> um, you're obviously hoping to hear that name a lot this year and score a lot of goals. Yeah, every year I want to score goals, obviously. But this year I think that's good if we don't have any injuries. It will be a good year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of coaches and players out there sort of talk down their chances, but I just asked Dennis where this side aims to finish this year, whether it be top four, top two, or push for the title, and he said he's all about pushing for the title. I guess you're the same. I am. I'm the same. Like I always want to win, and obviously at the beginning of the season you set goals. Yeah. Always you, you set the top goal so you can achieve the second or the third or whatever you whatever it can you know. Yeah. Because if you are, if you set the top four, then you'll be fifth or sixth. You know. Yeah. What I mean, you always go for the top, and then whatever comes from there is achievement. Yeah. All right. Best of luck for the season. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. All right, my next guest here at South Cardiff is one of the new signings, Nathan McAllister. Uh, first of all, mate, how is life at the new club? Yeah, it's going good, mate. Uh, all the boys are um, doing really well, treating, us, treating our new players really well, so it's good to be around here and um, yeah, looking forward to a, a successful year. Yeah, um, there's probably a bit of frustration last year and how it ended at, at the Redbacks and obviously uh, Daryl not continuing on as coach, but I guess I spoke to him about that. He's moved on. I guess you've moved on, and mm. you're looking forward to bigger and better things here at South Cardiff. Yeah, definitely, mate. It's a good opportunity uh, for me. You know, I've been with him for five, six years now, so it's uh, a good change, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, what made you pick Southie after a bit of interest from elsewhere? Um, oh, Dennis approached me early, and um, yeah, he was pretty keen on me coming up here, and pretty well made my my decision up pretty early and yeah, I'm pretty excited about the season ahead. Yeah, how have you found working with Dennis and uh, Dado and uh, the coaching staff here? Obviously, as you said, there's a bit of excitement for this new season. Yeah, no, they're really good, mate. They've um, uh, given me a good good role here and I'm, that's why I'm so excited, you know. It's a bit of a different change and different formations and different things, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So. Yeah. Uh, you came up against South Cardiff's five-star defence last season, that's what they were all about, so yeah, I guess you're expecting them to do the job again this season and knuckle down from the back. Yeah, you know, even in the, the first trial game, um, early on, you know, just a bunch of hard workers, you know, out there, so it's, um, no, it's really good. So the boys are good hard work inside, so we're, we're, we're looking forward to uh, climbing that ladder as quick as we can. Yeah. Um, obviously the club's gone about boosting its attacking stocks and obviously brought you in, you scored a fair few goals last year, but is it exciting to see a player like Dino Fajkovic sign up here? Absolutely mate, you know, like and we're trying to obviously uh, snatch Mandarovsky, but um, that wasn't the case and, and to bring Dino in, you know, that's just you know, outstanding, you know, like, so he'll, he'll be very good for us and um, looking forward to uh, linking up with him middle of the year there, so. Yeah. Do you feel like you're probably going to have a little bit less pressure on you this year, not being the skipper and probably not having to be the main threat in front of goals? Yeah, I guess. You know, got other blokes like Antonio up the top there, so he um, likes to get in the box um, early on, so it's, you know, a bit, bit less pressure, but um, it should be a good test anyway. Yeah. Is it good having uh, Jock Thompson and Josh Benequista here? Obviously, they were former Redbacks like yourself, so they've come over and joined you here? Yeah, mate, it's um, very, very exciting for those boys to come along, you know, two of the probably better players who are at Thornton, um, yeah. so it's good to have, have them guys to the squad, so yeah, looking forward to um, them being in the side and, and, and going from there. Yeah, I had a look at the, uh, the fixtures and you just have to wait a fair while to return to your old stomping ground. Um, I'll be there that day, is there bit of ambition to maybe get a goal or two against the old club? Yeah, it would be good mate, it would be good to go up against them, you know, having five years there, um, a lot of good guys there, so yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I do believe that Southie can probably be the best attacking team in the league? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see really, um, it's going to be um, 
bit of pressure on a few of us, you know, obviously uh, coming in to a new side, you know, there's always pressure there, so, uh, but hopefully, mate, that all goes to plan, it'll, uh, it'll be very exciting. Yeah, um, Dennis said the goal was to push for the title, uh, Claudin, or Antonio is his name, he said um, push for the top four, what, what, what do you think is the goal for this year? Yeah, look, you always want to make top four, um, but yeah. um, obviously anything higher is a, an extra bonus, but you know, everyone else has strengthened this year, so it's going to be a pretty tight one. I think every every year that goes on, it gets tighter and tighter. So yeah, but yeah, looking forward to the year mate here, and, and very excited. Do you think you might uh, make a push for the golden boot now that Teague has left uh, the competition? Don't know about that, mate. I'll we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, there'll be a, a few other guys out there to uh, tag that tag that on. Yeah, best luck for the season. Mate. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. I'm here with Ben Calling, one of the new signings here at South Cardiff, one of the goalkeepers here. Um, How has it felt so far to make the move here after a stint in the NPL? Yeah, pretty good. Um, always wanted to meet back up with Dennis. I uh, played with him up at Maitland uh, when I was up there. And, um, yeah, had a few years in the NPL uh, with Jeff last year and yeah, just felt right to make a move here. Yeah. Make him break into first grade, get a bit more game time. and. Um, yeah, it's been a good start to the year, so. Yeah, I was going to ask what stuck out as the most compelling reasons to join South Cardiff. I guess you just described it there, yeah. obviously. <laughs> um, Fadge was at Maitland and has that yeah. NPL experience, so it's good to have someone like that leading the charge. Yeah, and yeah, I knew him um, from yeah, playing with him previously, and you know, I thought just based on where they came last year, and yeah. uh, we had discussions um, like before I signed, and just the boys who were coming here, I thought, um, like with the, with the age of the team and things like that, um, it wasn't just, you know, we'll do well this season. I yeah. see it as a thing where uh, we can push into the NPL when that um, promotion relegation moves up. So yeah, yeah. that was something that um, I took into consideration as well. Yeah, um, obviously facing a bit of competition here for the number one jersey. And yeah. You've got to be at your best game. As Fadge just said, the uh, young Kyle Furness has been impressing lately. And yeah. I guess it's good to see and keeps you on your toes. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the competition, always a good thing. Yeah. Um, no matter what club you're at, um, you're always going to meet someone who's going to push you for that spot. And again, Kyle and uh, myself played at Maitland uh, together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've had um, a few years together. And um, yeah, I do the the training for us uh, Tuesday, Thursday, so we get in at 5.30, uh, start our session and um, yeah, working with Kyle has been really good. Yeah. Super committed to what he to what he does and um, yeah, he's definitely, I can see the improvement yeah. uh, that we've been working on and things like that, so yeah, it's good to see. Um, was it good to be obviously able to play some first grade NPL last year? Yeah. I believe you got a few games in for the Jaffers. Yeah, I got a couple of... Um, couple of games in uh, pre-season and through the year so um, you know it's like as small as the minutes were like you know it's super valuable experience and yeah. being part of the first grade squad um, got to train with them every single week and you know when you're when you're going to training and you're facing like shots from the Griffiths boys <laughs> and you've got people to look up to like Brad Swancott and Joe Wheelhouse like yeah. you know there's there's not much better than that for yeah. um, like learning experiences and last yeah. year was a huge year for me in terms of growth um, as a player so um, yeah that's why I thought you know moving into a first grade spot now's the time and um, yeah it's been really good but yeah those boys were super super good to get experience off along with James Pascoe himself yeah. um, always switched on so yeah. Um, you obviously had a tough day out against Valo a couple of weeks ago I've never seen a team score three goals like that in a trial match. Oh yeah. <laughs> they were switched on that day. Yeah. Yeah, Silsy's always got those boys nice and quick, no matter what time of the season it is. And um, yeah, I knew that they were gonna be quick. They're a young squad. Yeah. And um, yeah, well tuned and you know, you can only do so much. I, I think everyone had a good chat about that one at half time, the, um, their first goal. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I just had to shake his hand after the game and say, Good shot, because you know that was that was perfect top corner. So yeah, they're the ones where you just go, yeah, like yeah, good on you. You can have that one, but yeah, it was a good game still, and um, yeah, we definitely um showed what we have as a team, and yeah. for a first hit out, I I think three one 
is pretty reasonable um, against an NPL opponent. And I think it really shows that, like, especially some of the chances we missed, um, that we can really push for that um, first place in the comp this year. So yeah. Um, obviously, you probably did a bit of research and saw how strong the defence was here at Southie last year. Yeah. Um, you expecting more of the same this year? Yeah, I think um, the boys, the, the biggest thing for me is um, I've noticed that the boys listen to what I have to say. Yeah. Um, they listen to my input. And I think from, from the view that I've got from the back line, that's a super important thing. That's yeah. always going to lead to good success. So, um, yeah, we're really getting a gel quite quickly and that's going to just shine through in games because they know what I'm thinking, I know what they're thinking and yeah. you know, there's there's nothing really that you want from the back line than that so yeah, yeah I think um, yeah, we're going to be pretty solid at the back and you know, to have Fadge right in the centre of that, um, great communicator and yeah, there's not too many other people I could think in this comp that would be better to have in front of me so yeah, um, and then Corey and Liam, yeah, both just solid units and um, yeah, I think it'll be a really good year. Yeah, it's starting to rain here at South Cards, so that's quite a good idea we're in here. Um, what's it been like working with Dennis? Obviously, as you said, you've been training with the uh, younger keepers here and obviously that gives you a little bit of work to do, yeah. but you've obviously enjoyed that time. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, just being with Dennis, um, you know it's always going to be fair, team selection, things like that. I think that's a really important thing mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there's always always politics and stuff in there. And, yeah. you know, the, the first thing I said to him was, like, when we sat down and um, had a chat, I said, I just want a fair opportunity yeah. to work for that first grade spot. And, you know, I, I expect everyone to get the same chance. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whoever works the hardest, whoever, whoever performs the best deserves a spot. And, yeah, hopefully every week that'll be me. But, um, yeah, I know that there'll be boys pushing for that. And, yeah, just, just the players we've got. Um, yeah, it's going to be really um, competitive across the board, just yeah. within the club. So, um, yeah, it should be a brilliant season. And that best team will definitely be out there on the park every single week. Yeah. Now you run Tech as goalkeeping. Yeah. Um, how far has that come over the last few years? And obviously, I guess you've got a passion for all things to do with goalkeeping and gloves yeah. and the technique and just everything to do with that. Yeah, so yeah, I've had it for about, I think it's almost a year and a half now. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's like, been some like, great goalkeepers who have taken it up in the NPL and in UFM. Um, a lot of those guys have come back this year. Um, yeah, because you know, the biggest thing for me was you don't want to be paying like 120 bucks for a pair of gloves. Yeah. Um, like your Nikes and your Adidas gloves and things like that. And I kind of thought, look, I've I had a bit of like drawing experience and things like that, and I knew I knew the processes which were required and what people were after. Yeah. And um, so I kind of combined all that knowledge. Um, and kind of chased it. It was always something I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I set out and did it. And um, yeah, the response has been really good. Um, next order's coming in a few days and that's got a few nice uh, SMU gloves uh, coming in um, yeah. for the people who, you know, want personalization or their team colors and things like that. So that's something I really like to do as well. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, it's just been a really good response. And um, yeah, recently um, I've just, um, combined with Nat Cavalier's Goalkeeping Academy to um, be the supplier for um, all these juniors and things like that. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that turns out um, over this year as well. So yeah, pretty happy with how it's going. Yeah, I don't think there's anything more, uh, you know, brighter on a soccer field than a goalkeeper in all fluoro with fluoro gloves and fluoro gloves <laughs> and everything. Just colour, yeah. it just matches perfectly. Well, it can be done if, if they want fluoro. They can have it, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's not always a good thing, Flew, right? Um, the difficulty of being a keeper, I guess, is there any advice for youngsters out there coming through, even at this club with the 14s and the 15s, just keep trying it out? And yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's really important to, you know... It's, you, you've got to take it back to the basics every now and then, so um, pretty much, like, we'll, we'll do our Tuesday, Thursday um, each week, and... One of those four sessions, we'll go back right to the basics. So, you know, it's just simple passing, simple catches, uh, focusing on 
uh, diving forward, making sure the body weight's forward, so that yeah. you're not falling back, you're not going with your legs when you shouldn't be, um, just things like that. Um, yeah. Because, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's super important to have, you know, your bottom hand behind the ball, top hand on top of it, and that, that's the way you control it. It's the basic basic things that you've got to get yeah. right as a goalkeeper, and, you know, you can do as, as many fancy drills as you want, but, um, you know, it's always important to remember the basics and work on them just as much as you work on um, more specific things. So, yeah, yeah that's probably the advice that I'd have um, for young goalkeepers. Yeah, uh, final question. Uh, obviously, there's a belief here that this team can push for the title. Where do you see Southie uh, come, come all this time? Uh, yeah, I definitely think that we can take it out. Yeah. I think um, just, just the team spirit, we've got the boys in you know, like the whole senior squad, no matter if you're playing 23s or first grade, everyone's pushing to be in that first team. Yeah. Um, everyone knows that. And I don't think there's anything healthier for a club than that who wants to take that, um, like the cup at the end of the year. So, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely reckon that we can push for it. And there is a lot of good teams out there. There's a lot of teams that we'll have to conquer to get there. But, um, you know, if we turn up on the day and we're the better team, then yeah, I don't see why we can't do it, and I suppose we'll find out in August where we end up. So yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, best of luck this season, mate. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. I'm here with first grade coach Dado Fatchkovic from South Cardiff, and the 23s coach Chris Moylan. Uh, first of all, I'll ask you both how is 2018 treating you so far? Uh, good, good, good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, really good. Yeah. Um, Dado, what brought you and Dennis to South Cardiff? Uh, we always sort of, like, we are soccer family, you know, yeah. always talking about soccer, football, whatever, and uh, I knew that one day when kids uh, sort of finish their game, we're going to continue being involved, yeah. and somehow South Cardiff just popped out opportunity, and they give us opportunity. We took it a little bit, maybe too early, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris, if my research is right, you joined up from Adamstown mid season last year. That's um, correct. How'd that move come about? Um, I resigned when you know got sacked yep. last year, and the first grade captain last year was a young guy that I'd coached at uni. Oh. And he said to me, the 19s last year didn't have a coach. Yep. So I came and got involved coaching the 19s. I mean, Dennis and Dado, and I'm impressed with where they want to take the club, so yep. I'm back again. So now yeah. the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, working hard to add to this side, and you brought in some really good names this year. Yeah, that was actually Dennis's job, not mine. Mine is sort of to think about how we're going to play and yep. more, but Dennis is more, they, they come to play for Dennis, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, obviously, you took on the 19s after a pretty average first half of the season last year. They were struggling and they really turned around and you know they upset New Lambton and, and went on a bit of a run there towards the back end of the year. Well, yeah, it was good. It's just a bit of um, just a bit of structure, a bit of discipline, and, and and some basic things they needed to get right, which they just didn't. With not having a coach, they just didn't didn't have. So yeah. it, was, it wasn't anything magical, I don't think, that I did. It was just bringing a bit of structure. And yeah. you know, there's a bit of that brought to this squad. So, so it's yeah. Good. And a bit of experience. I mean, I've been lucky. Working with Gino for a year was good fun. And then the year before, I was with Graham at um, Adamstown and a couple of the other guys there. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good to bring that experience here. So. Yeah. Um, he's obviously persuaded Dino to come here and have a quiet year. He's uh, he left Magic, how'd that come about? Uh, Dino, Dino is an um, expecting child and uh, is a little bit stuck with his work and that's why he can't sort of commit himself uh, for Magic. That's why he, and here with us, this is uh, Law League yeah. and NPL and, uh, and his father is coach. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. it, you know, like, it's nothing, it's just how it is, like, yeah. it's, you know, 
you weren't going to see him go to play for another club in the league when. Dana, Dana is going to play if, if we do well and, and one day we go in uh, NPL, he's going to be with us, not just him. It's a lot of players that are going to probably come and play for us, yeah. uh, but we're not yet there. Uh, but uh, now, in the moment, like I said, he's busy with his life and, and with us, it's just to keep him sort of going, you know, like yeah. have Dino in our team, it's bonus, yeah. even on the bench. <laughs> yeah. I can probably ask you both, um, is it good to see a fair few of the 19s move up into the senior squad? I uh, just saw Ethan Spears out there, uh, Dylan Simone, just among those sort of players, and uh, obviously hoping that they can push further this year. But that's, that's, that, that was the plan, like when we come in Cardiff here, um, uh, everyone knows his budget is not big, yeah. and uh, other clubs probably go and bring players with the money. Yeah. For us, only chance to, to do something is promote our young kids that they're keen and they want to sort of to learn and play. We sort of last year didn't know competition, didn't know the players and uh, sort of last year for us was trial for everyone. Yeah. You know? And then we produced what four, four, five young players. Dylan was good, yeah. Ethan, uh, you know, and that's that's the that's the that's it. That's, yeah. that's what you want. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's the exciting part. Yeah. The, fu yeah. the future out there looks good when you look at that. Our squad, we've got a lot of young players. Yeah. And, and that's good for the future. I think you'd rather see that at, at this level pushing back towards NPL than mm -hmm. having a bunch of guys in their mid thirties, oh, yes. you know, approaching the end of their careers. When when you one day when you go over there in NPL, like you you have to have players that you had with you a couple of years that they know what you you're trying to do, you know, like they yeah. have to be ready. You know, and with all players, how are you gonna coach all players? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple of older guys playing. <laughs> yeah. Struggle. <laughs> um, has the support you've had from Dado and Dennis been uh, good for you? Obviously it's a real tight knit coaching group. Yeah, it's good. it's been fantastic and it's the um it's a it's a family club to start with. Yeah. And Dennis and, and, and um Dino and Dado uh, are close and you feel part of that family. It's just the way yeah. they are and it, it's a good feeling. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like an extended Fatchkovich family <laughs> yeah. in South Carter. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to learn Bosnian, but Cousin Chris. Cousin <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris though. Yeah, Chris, <laughs> um, The support you've both had from the committee here, obviously it's a very hard working club. Has it been enjoyable yeah. to have that Yeah, it's, it is. It's a uh, committee here is really uh, very few and they're working really hard. Yeah. Uh, we probably need more people involved uh, this is probably a chance to call everyone and join us uh, in this journey yeah you know to go back in the npl All right we want some older community members to come back we want new ones we want yeah. everyone you know yeah. yeah i think the good part from a coaching point of view is they're getting on with what they need to which yeah. lets us get on with what we want to do which is good yeah and there's no doubt they work hard so. Um, you obviously live every kick and every moment on the sideline. You're one of the you're most. <laughs> you're one of the more dramatic people on the sideline. Um, <laughs> is it hard to you know put up with some yeah. pressure some days? Uh, uh, look, that's that's probably you know. I used to yell at my kids when they were little. Yeah. You know? And uh, it's that's when when it's something you, in you you can't stop it. You know. <laughs> when they when they play good, I'm quiet. Some yeah. games, some games, yeah, they play good and, and I'm not yelling that much. But when when I see that they're not doing something that we've done on the training session or whatever, yeah. then <laughs> it's very hard. So <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's the same. See, if you if you're a soccer tragic, it's in your it's in your blood. Oh yeah, and yeah. and it's like you much prefer to be blind than, than yeah, but you just can't. Oh, there's a fair few of them in this comp, but I talk through for Gray Moore and Gray Goldfrey, and they're all the same. They're all very loud sort of people when they want to be. Um, is there a challenge to come up against the sides that obviously you might have a bit more depth in the 23s? 
whereas you guys have gone for more of a, a younger approach, these guys might have a little bit more experience? Um, I think at the end of the day, it's about how the first grade team will perform. Yeah. And we're all about putting the best first grade side on the park. Yeah. So the, the, the squad as a whole is training as a whole for, for that end. Yeah. So the, the actual results, as much as we like the win, the 23s competition, it's about winning the first grade competition. We, we actually don't have 23s. Yeah. We have, uh, we call ourselves yeah. senior squad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I said the first day, if uh, some of the players that they there, if they don't want to play first grade, they can walk home. Because yeah. I think everyone in this squad of, of 27, 8 mm -hmm. players have to be challenging to play in first grade. Yeah, and that's that's how I treat everyone, including Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, how do you think the uh, 19 will go this season after losing some quality? Obviously, Steve Blunt's come in. I had a chat with him earlier down there, and uh, it seems to be a few players stepping up from the 17, which I guess is good for the development of them. They, they've also had an influx of some really, really good players. Yeah, the, the under 19 squad is a better squad this year than it was last year. Um, Steve's brought some players in with him as well, um, so um, we're expecting big things from that from that squad. To be honest with you, plus plus they they have proper preseason mm. and they have a good start from dot. You know, like it's is is there any extra pressure now that other clubs are sort of realising South Cardiff can potentially be the real deal? Yeah. No. 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 Pressure. no, 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 no pressure. No pressure. Yeah, well, look, man. It's on the day you can beat anyone and same like we lost the uh, last season six 0 from from Tottenham. Yeah. Yeah. Not because it just happens. And yes. That's, that's the game. Rather we lose one guy six 0 than six man one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chris, uh, seeing what Dennis is doing here and uh, how he wants the club to go to that next level, is it sort of that's I guess why you jumped on board with the ambition to push for NPL. Yeah, I think having, having tasted life in the NPL, that's definitely where the, um, I wanted to be as a coach and to be involved in a club that wants to get there as a club, it's, it's, it's perfect yeah. in that sense. So yeah, we, I think everyone's focused, the committee are focused, the coaching staff are focused, yeah. the players are focused on getting back into the NPL. Now, there's a lot of work to do to make that happen, but on the football field, it's going to be hard if you've won the competition a couple of years in a row yeah. for them to ignore that. And I'm sure that's what um, that's what Cooks Hill, New Lambton and the other clubs will be pushing. They'll be, they'll be thinking exactly the same thing. Yeah. You know, that we win the competition a couple of years in a row. It's going to be hard for the for the Northern not to look at the club and go, OK, everything else off the field is structured, so you yeah. can go back up. And plus, plus Dennis uh, and you know, they played for fewer clubs in NPL. I mean, they had a chance to see how some, like, they play for Parliament or for Magic, whatever. They, they had a chance to see how some big clubs uh, in, in Newcastle, how they work. Yeah. You know? And Dennis is trying to sort of bring that same mentality and same discipline here. Yeah. You know? um, one thing I noticed, uh, I asked Dennis about it, this club is patching things up with the juniors and really trying to create one whole South part of Community-driven yeah. club. You have to. Mm. It's, yeah. it's no way. How 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 else you can do it? You done it. Yeah. Without juniors, without sort of, if you don't have the money, without juniors, without family, without you can't do it. Yeah. That's the only way. And that, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, last question on this year, Mark. Here, where do you think first grade will finish? What is the aim? Look, we always aim for top. Mm -hmm. Last year we done the same. We sort of uh, fell through a little bit last, maybe five, six games, because we had maybe six, seven players, first grade players, on holidays, missing. Yeah. And yeah, we we aim for top spot. What happened? Look, it's. <laughs> Yeah, great. Yeah, okay, totally. That's where yeah. we. That's, that's where, where we focus. Have to go. Oh yeah. 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 You hunt to, you know. Yeah. If if it's any spot, um, above the first spot, we probably would hunt for that spot. <laughs> and then when we finish first, we. <laughs> yeah.
All right, best of luck for the season, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.